Hey there, everybody. Get ready for a video about ancient India, a place that was pretty well ahead of its time. Uh, the goal of this overview, as a reminder, is just to get some quick vocabulary words, to get a quick impression, if you will. See, because there's like seals that are pressed in the... Never mind, I'll, I'll talk about that in a second. But uh, I want you to be looking for the major themes. Uh, I want you to be looking for the vocab words, because we won't have details. You won't have specific people, maybe some places, and maybe some things, but there's lots more to know. Here's the biggest of big pictures. This is the Indian subcontinent. You have the Indus River here and the Ganges River here. Um, all overall, it's about 2,000 miles wide, 2,000 miles you know, tall. Uh, it encompasses the modern-day countries of Pakistan, uh, Nepal, Bhutan, Bangladesh, India, Sri Lanka. Um, it has these huge barriers all around it. They keep it relatively isolated. So these are the Himalayan mountains. And you also have the Hindu Kush, and you have the Indian Ocean. And that made invasion pretty difficult. So they're pretty well isolated on their own here. But you do have some passes, like look up here. Do you have some areas where you can cross into this region? And so they become important parts of stories. Uh, and this Indian civilization we're going to talk about began in the Indus River Valley and then spread into the Ganges River Valley and then spread throughout the entire subcontinent. And it went on without much interruption during all this time period we will study because, again, hard to get in here. Um, there are four main regions. You've got the mountainous north. Then you've got the Indo-Gangetic Plain in through here, which is mostly where people will live as we talk about them in this video. And then the Deccan Plateau, a much higher region. Uh, you can see that it's raised up and has a different climate. It's um, yeah, very different than these lowlands. And then there are these tropical coastlines that have their own uh, climate regions and uh, their own cultures associated with those areas. But for this ancient video, we're going to talk about some local geography for the Indus River Valley and where you can find some major sites. You see Harappa and Mohenjo-Daro. Those are the best, well, you know, the most well-known sites of this civilization. This whole area is full of silty soil and lots of water from the rivers for irrigation to have agriculture. Um, the riverbanks are higher than the surrounding plains. So imagine like how roads are higher than the ditches around them. Imagine if those ditches were the places where people had their farms and the road was actually the river. So the river, if it comes up and over, it doesn't just spread out flat. It like goes down and out. It's really fascinating and can cause really widespread flooding. But again, that's good because that's fertilizer. That's uh, irrigation. They had two floods per year, one from snowmelt down from these huge mountains, and then one from the monsoon. The monsoon is a seasonal rain pattern from the Indian Ocean up into India. The difference in land and water temperature causes huge amounts of rain to be brought in in a short period of time. And that allows them to have two full harvests, which is wild. So they had very reliable food and lots of it. And they also were able to build their settlements in locations that were easily protected from invasions uh, by nomadic peoples. Uh, but here's the problem. So <laughs> I'm, I just told you about the geography because we still know what's there and we can look at geology about what used to be there. But we have very limited knowledge of the civilization because we cannot read their writing. Here, you can see over here are the, you know, some of the 400 symbols that are part of this early language. But we only have it on very limited uh, spots. On those seals, there's only a couple symbols per seal, and we don't have some big Rosetta stone like we did in Egypt to help us decode it all. Um, and we don't have a lot of elite burials of upper-class people or palaces or temples. And even in those places where we have some more elaborate uh, sets of artifacts, it's hard to get at them because there's lots of water that's just under the surface layers of dirt in these regions. And that makes excavations and archaeology very difficult. Um, this early language appears to be related to languages that are still spoken in India today, like Tamil in uh, the southern part of India, these Dravidian languages. But again, we don't have a lot of the writing and not in long stretches at any given time. Uh, even so, uh, they did leave behind some advanced technologies. Uh, they have exact standardized weights and measures, which means that if you lived in one town and you wanted to sell something to someone in another town, you both know what you mean when you say a pound of bacon that you'd like to sell. You're not both like, wait, wait, my pound or like your pound? That'd be really annoying. So it's really, really useful. They have fire-baked bricks, which they used to construct their buildings, which were a very, very uniform size. So it was easy to build uh, buildings that lined up really, really well, didn't have like cracks in things. So you could build watertight stuff, which we'll see is important in a second. Um, and also you could build it fine in water because if you use sun-baked bricks, those get damp, <laughs> which is bad.
Um, they also had early seagoing vessels, which allowed them to do a lot of the trade that they did with the Mesopotamian city-states, which we'll see in a minute. Um, but because we lack some of this early evidence, there's been a lot of controversy about what exactly happened to them because they didn't stick around forever. So were they perhaps ended by an invasion of a people called the Aryans? Did this group of outsiders cause them to collapse? Or was there a, uh, a change in their society? Or was there like a climate change? We'll talk more about that in a second, but we don't know because we cannot read the writing as one of the reasons that we don't know. So here's the timeline of their civilization. It starts out about 7,000 BCE with the earliest farming settlements that we've found, like um, Mergara. And here is some pottery from that town that you can see right there. And we also see a soapstone bust of a man with pattern outfit. And some people call him a priest, some call him a king. People argue about that. Uh, 2600 BCE is when we see these small towns in the area actually have developed into larger cities like Harappa and Mohenjo-Daro. And from then until about 1900 through 1700 BCE, about those times, it flourishes and it becomes this incredibly well-organized civilization. But then maybe an invasion, but most more people now think it was some kind of ecological disaster caused by climate change that you know changed the flow of rivers or resulted in less rainfall or things like that that resulted in the cities being abandoned and this civilization no longer existing as it had for uh, a long time. Let's talk about some of the social patterns. They had huge cities uh, with tens of thousands of residents from what we can tell, and they were very well organized. We have not so much evidence about their religion. Uh, perhaps they worshipped a mother goddess. We see some mother goddess figures, like, for example, this one made of terracotta from 2500 BCE. But again, we don't have palaces. We don't have temples. So usually the places where you would find stuff about their religion, like Egyptian tombs or the Egyptian temples or palaces, we don't, those, those don't happen here. So we can't use those as a way of understanding their religion. So we're not kind of sure. And then their social structure, again, it's not clearly laid out in the way that they buried their dead. And so we have less of an idea about what it was like. So here's some evidence on the different sides of this. Uh, there's some evidence of some pretty significant equality. Like there were no elite burials, which would have been nice for archaeology, but isn't that here? Uh, okay, what? Well, but we, they have equal health outcomes, which means like from the bodies we found, they all seem to be doing pretty well in terms of human health. Uh, they have universal sewers. So everybody's house was connected up to a sewer. Those are, those are huge. Those would not have happened in other places like Egypt or Mesopotamia that were more unequal. But the houses vary in size and their quality of possessions varies. And also they had clearly specialized labor. And the current theory goes that if you have specialized labor, you'll also have you know, economic inequality and social inequality. That's the theory. So it's not clear. Um, but they were, it is clear that they were very intent on being clean and that cleanliness and purity was important to them. We have these baths, like this great bath at Mohenjo-Daro down here, um, which are evidence of at least some kind of ritual use of water and bathing as part of their social system. And they also have those sewer systems, which got to have come from somewhere as part of their social beliefs. And so in terms of their political patterns, like again, we don't have the palaces, so here's what we do know. They had highly organized urban planning with straight streets, highly regular brick sizes, and someone had to have set those sizes, or they set them all together? It's unclear. Uh, but we also have very similar artifacts from lots of different places throughout the Indus River Valley civilization. Was there standardization? Did they all make the same kind of thing because someone told them to, or because there was just really widespread trade? We don't know. Uh, there were fortified citadels. There were easily defendable areas in a city with walls that had like on a raised platform. You can see that here, this citadel area. And then look how regular that street is. This is an artist's interpretation, but like this is a pretty good representation of what it might have looked like. Um, and you have organized services like trash collection, sewers, baths, granaries, which is a place where you store grain, you know, long term to like keep uh, make sure you have it in times of need. Like that shows some amount of political organization, but we don't know how it worked. Uh, they had standardized ways and measures, as I mentioned before, which also indicates some kind of political organization. And maybe the rulers have their names on these seals, or maybe it's merchants. We don't know. So economically, we have some more evidence about this. You can see more of these seals here with a little bit of the writing on each of them. Um, Harappa may have served as a, a gateway for these really important mineral resources like copper, tin, precious stones. Um, and so you can see the trade routes go from the Indus outlined in red here along these blue trade lines, both over land and 
through C. And notice it's very specific what they're going around. They're going around these mountainous regions through these passes. And so clearly they were trading with the Mesopotamians during this time. We know this because we found Indian seals, these Indus seals in Mesopotamia. In the Indus River Valley, they used more metal than those people who lived in Mesopotamia. And in fact, they had enough metal to go around that they used them for everyday objects like tools uh, that maybe the, even the average person might have had, which was definitely not Mesopotamia, much more likely to find bronze uh, swords and armor and things like that. Uh, they have extensive irrigation and organized agriculture, which again, maybe like what was their political organization like? We don't know. Um, these seals probably indicated uh, particular traders, carved identifiers for their trade goods, maybe? We don't know. We do know from these that they had domesticated animals during this time, but though no horses, which is important for the whole Aryan theory of invasion. And that's basically all we know about the Indus River Valley civilization. We'll learn more about this in class and we'll even examine some of the writing.